This is going to be my first time reviewing the Cara products and in front of me I have the new H2 switches in both two button one channel and four buttons two channels. Hey everyone my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. So we have a couple of products right here in front of me and I have the M3 hub and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the features that are built in on this and how we get them set up. First let's get them unboxed and see what comes inside them. So we have the hub and the two switches. So let's take a closer look at these box first. So this is the H2 EU four button two switches light switch. And at the bottom it says Akara hub required or it has built in thread which requires a border router. So we have the M3 hub right here. So we're gonna get that set up. On the side of it, we can see it has thread and Zigbee support. The neutral wire is optional. Overheat and overload protection. It has a 55 millimeter plate frame support, has a wireless switch mode and power consumption monitoring. If we have a look at the top just here, we have everything that it's compatible with. So it works with Home Assistant, which is great. We're gonna get that set up in this video. It has Matter support, works with Apple Home, works with Alexa, Samsung Things or Google Home. So inside this first box, we get the screws and everything that we need to mount the product. We have the actual product itself and we have some instructions. So if we go and open this one up right here, at the top here we have the two relay switches for the two different channels, and we have some wireless switches at the bottom, which we'll take a look in the app, which I'm assuming we can set to do something else. At the back we have a standard normal European socket that you would expect to see. So we have the neutral, which is optional, we have line, and then we have line one, line two. So these should be fairly straightforward to replace in your existing setup. Now I will say off the back of this, if you don't have any experience with electrical work, do consult a local electrician as they are fully qualified to deal with this. One wrong termination or connection can result in damage to this product and also life-threatening issues to yourself. In here, we have the instruction guide. We have the Matter QR code if you want to get that con connected via Matter. Inside here, we have the Matter QR code and we have the instruction manual. And also within here, I think we just have, I think these are just the warning guides on here. Now to take this apart, we can just literally take these top switches off and we're greeted with a couple of screws. We also have the Matter code and the QR code on here. And to get this opened up, we can just use the screwdriver and then we can pop this whole frame out. So we have the little switches that come out here and then we can mount this back plate. Now, there's a few different options in the way you can mount this. We have a bunch of different screw holes and I'm guessing if you want to, you're able to probably 3D print yourself a new one of these or get yourself a new one of these to fit this device right here. Now let's pop these to the side and open up the M3 hub and get this set up. So we'll take the hub out itself and everything that comes within it. So we have some screws to get it wall mounted. We have a wall plate and we have a USB-C to USB-A so we can go and power this up. So let's take this off just here. And there we go, that's the first look at the Akara hub. Now on the back we have the Bluetooth options and on the back right here we have a LAN port that we can get set up. So we have some QR codes on the front and overall this seems like a nice unit that you can just go ahead and pop on the side and get this connected away. The other good thing about this hub is you don't need to get it powered via USB. You can simply plug a cable in that has PoE power and you can see this is now lit and already been adopted into the app. And we'll come back to that just shortly. Now I'm gonna show you how to wire this up. And I said this a little bit earlier, if you don't know what you're doing, do get yourself a qualified electrician. Do not follow my cabling standards as I may not be using the right color for the regulations in your area. So let's take a look at how to get this wired up. So on the back, we have three cables. We have a neutral, which is optional. We have a live and a L1. So we have a cable just here. This is gonna act as what we would call a permanent live. So this is coming in right here. Now, let me just explain to you what is going on in this point because I have cabled some of it up already just to make sure it does do what I expect it to do. So we have our brown cable in here which is our live. So our live is going to come out and go into L into our switch. We then have the black cable which is the neutral. So the neutral is connected at the light as you can see here and I'm taking a neutral cable from the light down to the light switch. And then finally we have the live cable from the switch itself. So this is the line cable that comes from the switch, so we can go and pop that in. So I have three cables right here, 
and we have three connections going into this device. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with a neutral and then I'm gonna show you how to do it without a neutral. But first things first, I'm gonna pop in my permanent live. So this is coming from my main connection out to a plug. And then we're gonna plug in our neutral cable and that goes into the end. So we'll pop that in just there. And then we have the cable coming from the light itself. So this goes into the L1. Now it would be a similar concept if you had the L1 and L2, which is the two channel version. So you can see on the back of here, we have an extra socket, which will come from the additional light. And there we go, that is all set up and ready to go. So we can go and power this up. We have our cables in here. Now, generally you may have only two, where you only have the L and the L1, so you would just populate these two and leave the neutral out. But again, I'll show you that in just a second. So I have my safety precautions that I'm gonna pop this on just here. So I have taken some extra precautions when I'm using this. I have a fuse on this switch, so if anything does happen, it will all happen here rather than using my main ring main. So we'll go and pop this in and flip the switch. And I'll use my trusty tester just to make sure there is a cable, there is power coming through it, and there is. So I'll pop this down on the floor. And if you can see just there, there are some blue lights flashing on here on the light itself. So I can go and turn this on, which it's on, and then turn it off. So we can get this adopted also by the app if we want to, which we'll have a look at a little bit later on how to do that. And then this bottom one down here is configured as a wireless switch. Again, we'll take a look at the app just shortly on how to get that done. Now, if you don't have a neutral at your now, if you don't have a neutral at your light switch, this is a two-in-one, so you can wire it with or without a neutral. I'm just going to test my cables just to make sure they're not giving out any more power, and they're not, so we're good. We're safe to play around with this now. So we're going to take out our neutral here, and we'll take that out, and we're literally just taking it out of here. So instead of it coming from the light switch, so now your neutral is coming from your permanent live and going straight into your light. That's quite an easy, simple way to set this up without a neutral. We have the live and we have the L1 connected. So let's go and pop this back in and get it plugged in. Again, we can see on here, we have the blue lights flashing, so we can turn that on. And there we go, that works with it and without it. So really easy and simple to get this all set up with and without a neutral. So this is the light switch and we have, see we don't have a neutral here, but we actually have one on the Shelly switch itself. So the first thing we wanna make sure that there's no power going to any of these cables coming in, which we're good. There is a slight beep there, but there's nothing on these. This will be flashing. This would be beeping very fast if there was something on there. So we can safely go ahead and disconnect all of this. So we can take our L1 and go into L1 just here. And then we can take our neutral cable and go into neutral. Do make sure the cables are fitted nice and tightly. There we go, we can see both of these are fitted nicely. And then finally, we can just take our, our live cable. And then there we go, this light switch now disconnects. You can pop that into the live location. Now, if you wanna get this mounted properly within, Now, if you want to mount this properly, we can take off this face plate just here and then undo these two screws inside here. And then this face plate will pop off. And then you're exposed with this little part of the back where you can go and pop your screws in to get it mounted properly. Inside the box, you have these two wonderful screws. So we can go and start by screwing these in. And then we can make sure this is lined up how we want it to be. So let's pop this in here. Once you have it to the position you want, you can go and tighten these screws respectively. And there we go, that's now tightly in there. And we can go and pop the face plate back on. And there we go, that's nicely fitted on there. And then we can pop the final piece on here. I would probably suggest you turn on the mains again to make sure it's wired correctly. I know it is, so I'm gonna go and leave it fully closed. Getting the device added to the Akara Hub is really easy. So we press the plus button right here, 
and then we want to add the accessories. Now what we can do is just literally peel this off before you start using this. So you'll see there's a red light on here at the moment and we're going to double press it and then hold down for five seconds. You'll then see the lights on there flashing blue and we can go ahead and add the matter device or if you go back you will see that it's automatically found the device right there. So it goes around, searches off the network, it's found the device again and we can go start accessing the network. So it's going to ask for the QR code on the inside and we can just give the QR code a scan and then start accessing the network. This is a new device so we can go and set it up as a new device and in the back you'll see that we can now add this to the Akara home. And you'll see the lights start flashing quickly which means it's now pairing, is getting set up and hopefully should be ready in just a moment. There you go, we can now give this a name. So, so we give this a name of IM Bedroom and we click next and there we go, that is now done. So now it's registering the device and we'll click next, next. It lets you set up six cards in total and then we can press done. So we have switch one and we have switch two. So we can turn them both on and off straight from the app. We have some functionality down here where we can give the wireless switch a button, some functionality. So if you ever get that configured, you can then go and use these bottom devices right here. And you can see it shows the press on them. So single press. Now we have the switches connected into here. Let's take a look within the app at what we can do. So I've had a little look around in here, got all the firmware updated. And if you want to know how to do that, you simply click on the device itself, click on the settings in the top corner, and then go to firmware update. And that will then go off and check the firmware update for each of the devices. And then once you've done that, we want to have a look at how we assign the second switch button on here. So we have the single press for the top one, which turns the light on and off. And then we want to look at the bottom one. So to do this, we need to go back and then go to automations. We can add an automation. So we can say if the single button wireless two is pressed, then I want to very simply straightforward. I want to toggle the light. So now the top button, which toggles the light on and off. And now the bottom button also toggles the light on and off. Now, it does seem a bit counterintuitive, obviously doing that within the setup, but this is just a demo. You can trigger multiple actions to do multiple different things, such as open curtains, or trigger off any other automations that you might wanna configure. Once you've set up the automation, you click save, and then you give it a name. For now, I'm just gonna keep it the default one, and then we can see this is now set up on here. Now there is one more automation that I want to show you and if we go to this that is opening and triggering a curtain. So I've already gone ahead and created this already but you can go and choose one of the wireless switches on here and I've just choose wireless switch button 2 for a single press and then what I want it to do is actually open and close a curtain group. So I have that in here. I want it to open and close regardless. I just want it to do the opposite. And also I've put a time limit on it. So at the moment it's just from midnight to 23.59, but if you wanted it in a certain period, like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., you could go and put that in here and it would only work within that period. And if you wanted it to repeat every day, Monday to Friday, weekend, or customize it, you can also do that too. So let's have a look at how this works. We'll go and press the button and see the curtains open up. You can press the light switch button right here and then you can see the curtains opening up. And if I was to press it again, you can see them closing. The dashboard, this isn't a really an Akara app overview, but you can have a quick look here and we have all the default switches set up. Now, if you wanna add your automation onto here, you can click edit and put add a card. Now, this is a board that I have for my default room, which I've added everything in, but if you wanna see everything, you can click this little button at the top and it shows you everything that's set up on here from your wireless switches, from your wireless switches, and even your gateway. So that is everything I have you in terms of the H2 switch. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Are you gonna deploy this in your smart home or are you gonna have it adding to your additional setup? Or are you looking to get set up for the first time? And this is a really easy and simple solution to get you going. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.